Hey everybody, good morning. Welcome to a new episode of Stocks for Breakfast. And today we're gonna to talk about the topic that's on everybody's mind, which is, is it time to start looking for short sale opportunities in the market? Have the bulls left the building? <laughs> and is it time to either get out of the stocks, get into cash, or even more aggressively, if you're an active trader in charge of your own future, actually start to look to the short side of the market, which means betting on stocks moving lower, which is the same thing as buying a put option, where you buy the put and you are expecting whatever that security is to trade lower. And if it's here and moves down to here, you make the difference between the two the same way as if you bought it here and sold it up here. Short selling can be a little bit challenging to understand. I remember when I first started trading in 2000, I couldn't grip selling short and then buying it back later. And what if it moved against me? What if it moved in my favor? How do I get out of it? So I'm gonna walk you through the mechanics very, very quickly. Uh, but then we're actually gonna go over to the charts and we're gonna do a, uh, um, an analysis on some popular stocks that I have in my watch list on a regular basis. I don't know why I'm laughing. And then actually see if they're short sale opportunities. Now, the biggest thing I wanna get across here, there's three scenarios. And I know they're very common, everybody talks about them all the time, but we have a bullish order flow, bearish order flow, and no order flow. <laughs> Essentially, when, the, when we call the stock is, that's the right price. It's kind of like stuck in a box and there's zero edge there, there's very little edge. But here's the biggest thing I want to get across, and this is a mistake that I made early in my career that I hope to have you not make today, I want to get you on the right side, is you should not be looking to short sell strong stocks. That's a lot of S's there. <laughs> You want to short sell stocks that meet short selling criteria the same way you want to buy stocks that meet buying criteria. And we're going to actually take a look at some charts. We're going to go over some very quick um, uh, moving averages uh, and note what it means for it to be in the right order. Now, the part that I want to get across here is it's very tempting uh, when stocks are going down for the first time, um, like they are this morning. That's the whole point of, of the video you have to make a decision. If this is the first time that a stock is getting into bear market active trading territory, do you short sell it the first time it's turning over? Now, if a market goes from a, a full-on raging bull market to now it's starting to roll over, that first change of trend, and in the order flow masterclass, we call it the potential change of trend, because that's where a lot of money goes to die, when you don't recognize the fact that it's rolling over a little bit, and then it kind of chops around, and you're not recognizing the fact that it's chopping around and just sitting there. So it's not bullish, it's not bearish, it's just, it is what it is without an edge, right? So the SPY was kind of like in that a little bit, the SPY ETF, where we obviously raged up to new highs, had that two-day pullback, and then we're basically in a five to seven-day trading range. So within that trading range, we're getting a lot of feedback that, gosh, I'm getting my head beat in, this is a little challenging. And that's because a lot of people without patience aren't recognizing that that particular uh, security, the SPY ETF, and a lot of stocks, let's take Apple, for example, not clearly the same stock that it was when it was up before the stock split. Um, you have to recognize the road you're on. And again, I'll keep saying it, sometimes it's 75, sometimes it's stop and go traffic, sometimes it's raining, sometimes it's snowing, sometimes you're the only one on the road. But you as a trader have to recognize the conditions before you step on the gas because you're either gonna cruise along and everything's gonna be great, or you're gonna hit the car in front of you. So what we're gonna talk about today is the mechanics of short selling very, very quickly. Uh, and then we're gonna look at some opportunities to see if there are short sell opportunities. So you can decide, do I wanna look at short selling? Do I wanna understand how to short sell? Can I even short sell in my account? And uh, is it even worth it on the, the long side of the market? So the long only, uh, you, um, if you've ever heard of hedge funds or they say long only hedge funds. Um, so you might decide you don't want to short sell. So what does that mean? That means that you need strict criteria for when to be on the sidelines versus, okay, now I can start looking. So at the very uh, smallest, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? The, the minimum criteria that you'd be looking for if you're an active day trader, for example, if you're an active day trader, the minimum criteria is you would want to see your stock well offered, which would mean two daily candlesticks, both of them big red candlesticks and closing on the lows, and you'd be looking for a continuation to the downside. That would be the minimum criteria, not the greatest criteria, but the minimum criteria. And the reason I bring that up is we're probably going to see a bunch of stocks that meet that minimum criteria, but are not 
short sale opportunities because they just, this is the first time they're rolling over, the first time they're breaking support, that kind of thing. And usually the, what's the, the, uh, the pioneers are the ones that have the arrows in their back. They paved the way for everyone else. Um, so we're going we're gonna to head over to the charts and we're, we're going to look at both the scanner and some regular stocks uh, that are in my watch list. So, oh, by the way, if you find these videos helpful, it would mean everything to me if you click down and subscribe to the channel. I would really appreciate that. Uh, and if you want to trade together in real time, click down and learn about the boot camp too. Uh, I think you'll find it pretty exciting. So we're going to head over to uh, the charts. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at, uh, we're going to pull up this list. Um, and I guess we're going to start out with Lulu because it's a good example of the first time a stock is rolling over. So we have the 20, the 50, and the 200 period simple moving averages. So we've talked about this in the past. When they're in the right order, which means the 20 is above the 50 and the 50 is above the 200, you can start looking for opportunities to buy. The opportunities are in the right order. However, you need to pay attention to is price also above the 20. And in this case, since Lulu had earnings, price is not in the right order. So this is a really, this is a good example of a mixed scenario where the moving averages are technically still in bullish order, but price action has clearly broke down. So I want to talk about this area, this area, and obviously this area. When prices are above the 20 period moving average and they're in the right order, everything in your world is good as far as being bullish. That's Price and the moving averages are in the right order. When the moving averages are in the right order, but price action gets in between the 20 and the 50, that's what I call kind of like the phantom zone where it's still a buying opportunity, but not as good as if it was above the 20 period moving average. When price breaks below the 50 and is between the 50 and the 20, now you have a potential change of trend. And even though this happened very quickly because of earnings here in Lulu, it's still not the greatest short sale opportunity because the moving averages are still in bullish order flow. So you can see the difference here where, where I keep using the analogy of driving. <clears throat> you need to be able to determine what kind of road you're on right now. And we're still going in, um, we still have bullish indicators on the dashboard, but something is kind of like seeing traffic up ahead and there's something wrong. So you can see here that we are well offered on the daily chart, uh, but we do have some support coming up here. So there's not a lot of room to go and you could actually make a case that the support is a little bit higher than that, which that's another thing. It's very difficult to be shorting into support levels in a bullish market. Now, whether the market is still bullish anymore, I don't know. We don't want to overstate the fact that it's just punching lower today. So I'm bringing this one up specifically because it actually is not perfect in either side. So you need to recognize when to stay away, when to be in cash, and when you have everything lined up. So you can clearly see here, everything's lined up, and the stock had basically, uh, I want to say, a $90 rally to the upside. Everything was pointing in the, in the right direction for bullish. But now it's not. So you have a decision. Is this the best stock on the board for me to be looking at? And the answer is no. The answer is it's not. So if we can go and we'll take a look at, let's just say, uh, we'll take a look at the SPY. We'll work our way through the market. So you can see here, the SPY is literally in, <clears throat> excuse me, that phantom zone, right? It's perfectly in the phantom zone where the moving averages are in the right order, but price is now stuck between the 20 period and the 50 period moving average. So this, to be clear, does not become a short sale until the 20 period moving average crosses down below the 50, which obviously at that point, price will be below the 50 as well. And then you have to make a decision. Is that perfect? No, it's still not perfect because perfect means the 20 is below the 50 and the 50 is below the 200. So we have a lot of work to do to get to the other side of the market. And we, we might have that in some of the financials, maybe, maybe not. No, so you can actually see here the 20 is above the 50 and they're both below the 200. So you can see there's like a really big mix of um, stocks that are in play, stocks that are not in play. And I'm actually gonna point out, let's just say for argument's sake, we'll go to um, the airline stocks. You can see the airline stocks are uh, kind of neutral, right? You can actually take a look and see that there's nothing going on because the price action has been uh, very clearly sideways since the pandemic started. They're trying to fight their way back, but again, not in perfect condition. So what is perfect condition? What does a trade look like to be on the short side. Well, you're gonna have a hard time finding it right now, honestly, because most of the stocks that we've been watching over the last year or so have been in perfect bullish order flow. So not really awesome conditions. So if we take a look at a stock like Codex though, 
So Codex actually got hammered, and this is where you really need to use your um, your skills, your experience. You, you have to put more into yourself, and this is this is where the difference comes in. And you, you're not a chart reader; you're a tape reader. You want to be a trader. It's not just oh, the moving averages, and you blindly. Uh, saying, oh, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. You have to put yourself into the trade. You have to say, is it a great idea? So I'm bringing up Codex, for example, for a reason, because we noticed stuff on the charts recently where there is, even though the, despite the fact that 20 is below the 50, the 50 is still clearly above the 200, so still not perfect conditions. However, what we did see on the charts, and we'll pull this up uh, very quickly to illustrate this, is look at these volume spikes. So there's so much more going on in the trade here where it looks like a short sale just moving using the moving averages, but the charts and the volume and reading the tape tell a different story. So with that being said, oops, put that back on there. we're going to actually do a very quick scan. And we're going to start out with criteria that um, um, I call my, uh, my, my, my template, and let's just say for argument's sake, uh, short sale opportunity. So you can see the criteria here is below the 20, below the 50, and below the 200. So these stocks automatically match the criteria that we were just discussing. And we're going to take a look at the charts really quickly. So we're going to look for opportunity. So let's just say for argument's sake, we're going to look at FANG here and see if that matches a potential short sale opportunity. So here's where it gets interesting. It actually does. This meets the criteria. So the 20 period moving average is below the 50. They're both pointing down and they're both below the 200 and pointing down. So energy stocks right now, immediately in my mind, be like that might be the first place I would go to look to short sale stocks. So we could take a look at some other opportunities in energy. So you can see Exxon Mobil very quickly here. The 20s below the 50, 50 is below the 200, all three of them are pointing down and obviously price action is below there as well. So this is how you work your way from stocks that are or were in perfect bullish scenarios, working their way into a potential change of trend, which that's kind of that phantom zone where it's, it's not an aggressive long anymore, it's not a short sale anymore, and you gotta pull back from those, or you finally find some stocks that meet the bearish criteria, and if the market continues to trade lower, I'm not saying it is, if the market continues to trade lower, the easier, and again, easier means in the direction of the order flow, the easier trades to spot the, the higher probability trades in that scenario would be short selling stocks that meet short selling criteria, which we just gave you. Now, again, I wanna repeat something I said before, short selling strong stocks is very challenging to do. You won't get the same follow through that you will in stocks that already have institutional, what we call smart money selling. So there's a lot to digest here, but really the main thing is this, you need strict criteria that tells you if something is a long, if something is in a box and that's the right price, or even like you just saw with the moving averages, it's stuck between the 20 and the 50, or like the energy stocks that we just pointed out, they are clearly in the right order for a short sale and you could look for opportunities to put that trade on. So there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in here. We actually did a video just recently in Stocks and Breakfast about understanding short selling uh, and the mechanics of it and how it actually works. Probably wanna click over to that as well. Just scroll to the right over there and you'll see that as well. So if you have any questions, Definitely leave a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Have a great day.